When the average person thinks of the War of 1812 today, they tend to think of a handful of highlights from the conflict, like Francis Scott Key and the Star Spangled Banner, or maybe the burning of the public buildings in Washington, D.C., or maybe what happened here. During the January 8, 1815 Battle of New Orleans, a force of U.S. Army soldiers, U.S. Navy sailors, U.S. Marines, and militia under the command of General Andrew Jackson stopped a British attack that attempted to capture the city. And when the history of this battle is taught today, it's typically done using a series of bullet points. And among those bullet points, the one that is most frequently repeated states that the Battle of New Orleans was the last battle of the War of 1812. That's a great factoid, but is it true? The answer is a big fat no. And that's because of the fact that the British force that was repelled here on January 8th, 1815, ultimately withdrew to transport ships waiting on the Gulf of Mexico. Those transport ships then moved it to Mobile Bay and landed it at Mobile Point in the present day state of Alabama. After which that assault force, the same British assault force that had fought here, then laid siege to and ultimately forced the surrender of the American garrison of Fort Boyer, a temporary fortification that was situated where Fort Morgan is today. The Battle of Fort Boyer ended on February 12, 1815, more than a month after the Battle of New Orleans. So, was the last Battle of the War of 1812 fought at Fort Boyer on Mobile Bay, or was it fought here at Prospect Bluff on the Apalachicola River in present-day Franklin County, Florida? 75 miles upriver in that direction is 31 degrees north latitude. Today, that marks the state line separating Alabama and Georgia. But 200 years ago, 31 degrees north latitude was an international boundary separating the Kingdom of Spain from the United States of America. In 1814, the British established an outpost here at Prospect Bluff and then immediately began the process of assembling, training, and arming a corps of colonial marines made up of indigenous people and self-emancipated African-American former slaves. The British plan was to use the Corps of Colonial Marines as a raiding force that could conduct attacks across 31 degrees north latitude into the state of Georgia. In support of that, the British built a large bastioned earthwork fortification here. They armed it with cannons and then they equipped it with muskets, carbines, sabers, and a very large quantity of gunpowder. The British were still here training the Corps of Colonial Marines when, in February of 1815, they received word that the United States Congress had ratified the Treaty of Ghent, ending the War of 1812. The treaty required the British to withdraw from Spanish Florida, but when they departed, they left behind all of the weapons and ammunition. The indigenous people here left soon after the British did, but the self-emancipated African-American former slaves with nowhere else to go, they remained behind. And it's because of this that this place was ultimately given this very early 19th century name, the Negro Fort. In the immediate aftermath of the War of 1812, the United States wanted to annex Florida. The American military, though, recognized that a well-armed and well-provisioned fortification full of fugitive slaves would be a problem. So ultimately, Andrew Jackson in mid-1816 issued an order for a military expedition to proceed here and attack and neutralize the Negro Fort. That attack emerged in the form of an expedition that sailed upriver on gunboats and carried out an assault on Prospect Bluff on July 27, 1816. In that battle, a single shot fired by one of the American gunboats penetrated the powder magazine, caused an explosion that set off all of the gunpowder inside of it, and in that explosion, almost everyone inside the fort was killed, and that was the end of that. The battle that took place here occurred more than a year after the Treaty of Ghent ended the war, but the circumstances of this battle were entirely created by the circumstances of that war. So, where was the last Battle of the War of 1812 actually fought? Well, it wasn't fought in New Orleans, and it certainly wasn't fought at Fort Boyer on Mobile Bay. The last Battle of the War of 1812 was fought here at Prospect Bluff.